Hey everybody and welcome back to Greasy Boy Customs. Today we're going to be talking about the Bronco, making some more progress on the sheet metal, show you a little bit what we're doing there and show you what we've done since the last time you checked in. The last time we left off with this, we had gotten the rear quarter tacked in place and we were starting to fit up all of these panels. Since then, as you can see, we've made some good progress and we've got the door hung as well as the inner and outer rockers, the inner apron panel, and we've got a little more welding that we've done on the back as well as getting the B pillar dialed in. So after we get the front radiator support in, the core support, as well as the inner fenders and all the side apron panels and get everything fully welded and functioning, then we will start prepping for the next steps. So what are the next steps? There's quite a few steps we have left because we're still in the beginning stages of this build. We still need to get the engine and transmission over here, get the mounts made and put in place, and make sure we don't have any more modifications to do to the floor, like the transmission tunnel for clearance issues. We also are probably going to have to modify the inner fenders a little bit just to clear, because those Coyote motors are very wide engines. We want to make sure all that's good. Once we know all the sheet metal and fabrication on the body is done, then we'll remove the body. Clean the bottom of the body off, sandblast it, get it ready for uh, primer or paint or undercoating, rhino liner, raptor liner, whatever we decide to do on the bottom side. After that's done, we still need to clean up the chassis, go through the suspension and the steering. There's a suspension lift we're going to be installing as well. Make sure all that's good. And then the chassis is going to be blown apart and prepped for powder coating. I remember a couple of videos back and I told you, save this stuff, don't throw it out. Well, there was a reason I said that. And this is a great example. We're getting ready to put that core support and stuff together. Now we have the original one to guide us, which would have been super helpful if this thing was like that on the sheet metal on this driver's side. Unfortunately, because it was so wrecked and damaged, we had to go off measurements on the passenger side and mirror everything. And not everything was exactly the same, but it was very close. So don't throw your old parts out until you're done. Let me show you a cool tool that you can use to help find your center on here before you start welding your brackets on. This is a neat product from a company called Trulers. So what's really cool about this is you have a center point on this tape and then it goes out each way. So you move it to where it's 28 and a half there and it's 28 and a half over there and then you know there's your center point. Now this does come with an adhesive back but what I like to do is use two magnets so I can use it multiple times. They also make magnetic ones. Here's one of their foot long magnetic ones. Now these ones do not have it centered and then going out in the same increments, but it's just a one foot rule, six inches at your center. And it is flexible, which is nice because if you're going around a curved surface, you can still make your marks. Works great. Alrighty, look at this. We got them uh, all tacked in place there in the right locations. And I was worried that I didn't have these and I was gonna have to take them off the old one, but luckily we already had those. Customers are way ahead and thought about these small things like that. So none of this is welded in or bolted in. All we're doing is clamping it, as you can see by all the random clamps, into place to make sure it fits. How well does it fit? As expected with a vehicle that was in an accident, it all fits like shit. The passenger side stuff lines up pretty nice. The driver side, however, has a lot to be desired. Now we know we have this part of the vehicle straightened out, but we don't know if we have the rest of this straightened out. And this is why we are doing this. Before we weld these on too, even after we get them straightened out, we want to test fit the front fenders with these clamped in place before we weld anything, just to make sure it is all going to line up correctly. So in the meantime, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna check our measurements and we're gonna see where everything is and where the failure may be that's causing the misalignment issues. That's gonna wrap it up for the update on the Bronco. Like we said, we're gonna get this stuff fitted, set in place, and then temporarily attach it and then test fit the fenders. Once everything's in place and good, we'll go ahead and get that all welded up and do a little more prep before we pull this thing off the frame so we can do the framework and the work underneath the body as well. Just as a reminder, treat it like Walmart furniture. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Do not weld it in solid until you know it fits. Till next time, happy hot rodding.